Welcome to Behind the Audition podcast with your host, Kurt Hilton. Listen in on interviews with voiceovers, filmmakers, producers, animators, and much more. Kurt, a voice actor himself, will give insider tips to the business, talk with guests about how they got into the business, and be sure to stay tuned to the end of the podcast when he challenges his guests with a pop-up audition. Now it's time for Behind the Audition podcast. Here's Kurt Hilton. Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Audition podcast. On this episode, I got to speak to the phenomenal voice actor, Kayla Pitts. Kayla and I talked about how she got into the voiceover industry, great tips to building your brand as a voice actor, her role in psychology and the transition to voiceover. We also talked about Kayla's role working with the amazing group Women in Voice. So sit back and enjoy another episode of Behind the Audition podcast. All right, now coming on the show, I'm super excited to have my next guest, they have been in some really cool projects that we're going to talk about here. And I think that you're going to be super excited to have on the show like I am. Kayla Pitts, welcome to Behind the Audition Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing well, doing good. Kind of bummed that we're about to get a foot of snow here, but <laughs> oh my goodness, that, <laughs> where are you at? I'm based in New Hampshire. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I'm in North Carolina. So we we had 70s yesterday. We're at 60 right now. So I, I feel the snow. I, that's why I moved away from the Midwest to get away from that snow. <laughs> yeah, we had our first spring tease day yesterday. It was like 50 degrees. And then I checked my phone this morning and they're like winter storm weather advisory for tomorrow. You're getting a foot of snow. And I was like, perfect. Great. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, thanks again for being on the show. I'm, I'm super excited mm -hmm. to have you and let's get right into it. So you got into voice acting. What made you choose to be a voice actor and when did this happen? Always the first question. Um, so I have been doing voice acting for about two and a half years now, and I got into it because my younger brother was interested in doing voice acting. And um, I was working in a different field at the time. My background in uh, education is psychology. So I have uh, my bachelor's in psych. And then I was working a government contracting job, which was boring, but comfortable. <laughs> my younger brother, was interested in doing voice acting. And I told him I would help him research all the steps he might need to take to jump in. Mm -hmm. um, like what, what would that entail? So I put all of that together and I showed it to him and he was like, I don't, I don't want to do this. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. I kind of want to. Um, so I took everything that I had prepared for him and then just kind of dove in. Wonderful. So you said two years ago. So was this around the time the pandemic started? It was, was like a life changing moment or? <laughs> um, some people, what was the term I heard on Clubhouse the other day? Uh, pandemic VO baby. I don't think that I am. <laughs> yeah. I started my journey right before, but okay. what the pandemic did do, it was gave me an opportunity um, because I was laid off for six months mm -hmm. to really like get into it but my coaching started before the pandemic um but it, it did give me the opportunity to really like settle in and figure out everything else my brand marketing um networking all of that well you, you sound like you did everything correct and, that, and that's what i always ask you know coaching is always the first thing recommended so how did you choose your coach like what was, what was that process like finding the right coach that that's great for you um, well, so I was actually, I feel like I was actually really lucky. Um, I participated in a program that um, matched me with a coach and her name was Lisa Datz. Um, she's voiced some voices in Red Dead Redemption 2, I think is the most recent thing uh, off the top of my head. But um, after I had my voice sort of um, evaluated, mm -hmm. uh, they thought she would be the best coach for me and we hit it off. So it was really great working with her. Um, she taught me a lot. I've also worked with Deborah Sperling, which has been great. Um, and then picking up other knowledge everywhere else that I can. I, I like the, the brand that you bring to the table. And one of the things I, when I first went to your social media page, you have, you pick certain colors that, that match your brand. What was that process like finding the brand that, that best suited you? I think what, where that really came from is my background in psychology. So I, I kind of uh, approached it from that perspective. I was mm -hmm. looking at um, the psychology of colors. I asked a lot of people uh, to give me words that they thought 
associated with me. Like that's genius. What do you think of? Yeah. What do you think of when you think of me? And then I, I took all of those answers and then like found all of the similarities um, because you want your brand to match people's experience of you as well. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, so then I also, I, I kind of picked colors that I liked, but also colors that match the psychology that I was trying to bring when I wanted people to feel a certain sentiment when they come across my brand. Wonderful. So if, if it, did, were you in like, uh, did you deal with mental awareness and psychology? What type of psychology were, were you like, what line of work were you in before voiceover, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, no problem. I, um, I actually, I burned out of the field pretty quickly, uh, which I think tends to happen to a lot of people, especially right out of the degree. Mm -hmm. So I was working as a residential counselor for six months and then I burned out, but the, the, um, hours were like 12 hour shifts mm -hmm. and I was working with clients across the autism spectrum. Okay. Um, some of them aggressive, some of them, um, needing assistance throughout their daily lives. Um, and so I did that for six months. I would support them, bring them to their um, treatments. Uh, the, the place that I was working was also connected to a school. So sometimes I would have to bring them into the school so that they could get their classes done and everything like that. But I would prepare meals for them and walk them through recreational things. Um, and it was very rewarding. And I actually, <laughs> I think a lot of my passion for using my voice came, mm -hmm. uh, became renewed when I was working in that position because I had a client who um, was essentially blind. And so everything interacting with him had to be auditory. Um, and he, you know, his, his auditory senses were extreme too, to compensate. Right. Um, but a lot of the time I would be entertaining him with my voice or doing mm -hmm. songs or, uh, imitating sounds. And I think that that helped reawaken in me that creative fire that I used to have as a kid. Um, and really reminded me that like, I do love using my voice and also that job was burning me out <laughs> and I yeah. had to find something else. Yeah. Wow. Well, I mean, I, I appreciate you, what you did in the past. I mean, that takes a lot of patience um, in that line of work that I hear. So your first audition, let's talk about your first audition, getting into the booth <laughs> and, and getting that first audition. What was that process? Like, what, what was your, if you remember that, what was your first audition process? Like, I think I do remember it. I, I started off very slow and I jumped on to casting call club. Are you, you're familiar? Yeah. 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 A lot of, um, kind of low stakes, yeah. <laughs> low stakes up there. So, um, I listened to, because you can listen to other people's auditions on there. I listened yeah. to other people's auditions, um, started to pick up some confidence that I, I that I could do it. Right. And then, yeah. um, it was a, it was an animated gig and I don't, I don't believe that I got it either. I don't yeah. think that, I, I don't think my first three auditions went anywhere, but I, I remember my fourth audition on there did get picked, which was, was like, Excited. everybody freaks out. Yeah. yeah. When you, when your first casting, when you get yeah. that email that says that you've been picked. Um, but I do remember going into the booth and and feeling unsure of myself. You know, I was like, I heard all these other auditions. I feel like I can do better. But then I got in front of the mic and I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had to take, I had to take a, a few, you know, a few minutes to myself to, to really push through, you know? Absolutely. You know, and I think the uh, casting call club was, is it like an ego check for anybody who thinks that, Oh, I'm just going to go get a job on there. I was talking to a couple of uh, voice actors about that. And I think every voice actor, when they feel like, you know, they need an ego check, go on there because those directors and producers on there, those are, those projects are their babies and they hold on to them tight and they don't care who you are. If this, they are determined the person they want for the project. So I always say, go on there audition. If you think you're like Mr. Or Mrs. Big stuff and get on there and, and you'll get an ego check real quick but I, you will find some amazing talent on there. And speaking of that, so you just recently did a YouTube project. I just came across, I was talking to you the other day on social media. Let's talk about that project and how that came about. God school. Yeah. Yeah. Very excited to be a part of that. Um, such a beautiful animation. It just like, I was a fan of the series previously. So I'd been following them 
and um, just liking all their posts, commenting because I, I, I love their stuff. Um, and the creator reached out to me on Instagram. Uh, I think I think maybe in response to a comment I had left on a post saying, um, it would be amazing to voice one of your characters. And it was such a throwaway comment. It was just like, oh, this is beautiful. It'd be great to voice one of your characters. And then he DM'd me and was like, I have a character coming up that I think might fit for you. Um, so the stars aligned there. I think also my branding might have had something to do with it as well, um, proving that I'm professional, that I know what I'm doing. Um, but it's been very exciting working with them. There are some big names <laughs> on that docket. So um, it's been fun. And I really, I, I love the animations. It's always so satisfying when you're voicing something and then you mm -hmm. see the character come to life with your voice. Absolutely. So you, you found something you really love. Now you're doing a character's voice. Is this something you want to keep doing? Or is there, is there a certain niche or something, a certain genre that you want to stick with being a voice actor? My comfort zone is definitely commercial. Okay. Um, and I think, <laughs> I think it, it's just the cadence of my voice naturally. Mm -hmm. Um, the way that I, I naturally talk about things can sound, kind of sound commercially. Um, so that's my, that's my comfort zone, but I am really hoping to bridge more into animation. And this was kind of my first, um, my first experience dipping my toe into something of this caliber um, that gets so much visibility. So I do have, I do have hopes to do more of that in the future, but I think my next step either later this year or beginning of next year is to put together a character demo because right now I currently have commercial narration. We do really good at that. So I just want to give you a shout out yeah. on that. So <laughs> Thank you. It's, insecurities is real and your, mm -hmm. your former line of work, you know, is real. How do you overcome insecurity and how do you accomplish like, you know, at the end of the day, feeling like, you know, I did great today or I did awful. What can I do better? How do you overcome that insecurity to, you know, not just give up? Mm. One thing I'm, I'm constantly reminding myself of, and this might not work for everybody, but mm -hmm. it works for me, um, is that there is so much work out there. There's so, so many opportunities and they're all different. And there is, there is absolutely a job out there to fit your voice. Um, so I tell myself that <laughs> I may not have gotten this one, but there are so many jobs out there. Um, and one will be the perfect fit for my voice, you know, where I'm not straining or I'm not um, working outside of my wheelhouse. Um, Cause you also, when you complete the project, you wanna be happy with how it comes out, you know, the, mm -hmm. final, the final project. Um, but working through the idea that I may not have gotten this one, uh -huh. I could get the next one or the next one um, really push, pushes me through. That's good to hear. Cause I, I, you know, on, I, you probably see this on social media. Like I do, you'll see good days and bad days of us voice actors out there. And you can tell what their posts, their emotions yeah. and some back each other out. And sometimes you're like, you know, like you want to say something and be like, ah, I, you know, let somebody else do that. Cause you don't want to say or hurt somebody's feelings. What, what advice would you give for those um, who dislike to post and not think about what they post. Cause sometimes you'll see people post things and then be like, Ooh, I don't know if that was such a good idea. What, what's some recommendations to the new voice actors out there dealing with the struggle of, of the, 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 I guess you say the rejection of being a voice actor and not getting every job you want to get. How do you, what would you advice would you give to them on that? I actually, I actually feel like my perspective on this has changed in the past year. Um, and I think that has a lot to do with TikTok and the, the transition to more video posts. Um, because in the past, I know I probably would have given the advice that if you're happy with it, post it. If you're okay. not happy with it, don't post it. Now, if you're not happy, post everything is my perspective at this yeah. at this point. Yeah. Um, it's hard because that opens yourself up to critiques and feedback from your peers. Yeah. Um, but as long as it's constructive, it's only going to help you grow. Right. Um, I know that I I am also uh, a big perfectionist, so 
I, I can say that out loud that you should post everything, but walking the walk myself, I definitely don't <laughs> post yeah. everything. I'm trying to get better um, at not over polishing my stuff, right. but the more, the more you show, uh, because like the buzzword is authenticity. We're right. all trying to be authentic at this right. point. That's how you sell. That's how you get places. So showing your lows and highs is a full spectrum of of you as a person and it helps people really connect to the authentic you whether that gig or video you posted was was fantastic or mm -hmm. not um they're learning about you and that's what brings it value well wow, that's a good i never thought of it like that. that's great you know i yeah. <laughs> i you know being 46 i'm a little older so and I, I i guess i'm setting you know i guess you would say the older ways but no i'm like you know i sometimes i caught myself recently uh before i post something i look at it and I almost send it to myself and be like, how would I feel on the other side reading this yeah. post? Are, Cause you might, you might get your feelings hurt. And so lately what I do is I look at it and I let it sit for a little bit because sometimes, you know, your emotions just come out, you know, the, the, the world is different now. I mean, with everything going yeah. on in the world, it, the world is just crazy. You know, we, we feel like we're coming out of the pandemic and then something else happens. So I think we are as individuals, voice actors, fragile and like mental where, I mean, we, we talk in a booth every day. What are some things you do? to keep yourself like just positive because you have to be positive in this job, right? Because we get so many negative things. How do you stay positive in this industry? It's tough. <laughs> it's tough not to get dragged down. Um, I think that a lot of the connections that I've made in the past few years, uh, especially like the pandemic, I think, opened up the virtual world to people making like actual friends with people yeah. that they've never met. <laughs> yeah. So um, I've got people who, you, you know, uh, my accountability buddies, <laughs> people who um, I trust their their judgment and their support as mm -hmm. uh, as genuine. And that keeps me afloat when I might hear other things from other people. Um, also being very settled in who you are as a person, I think helps you maintain the positivity. You won't be questioning yourself as much if you're secure in who you are and where you're coming from when you're interacting with people. I love that. I love it. It is and tough. No, no, <laughs> I love is. the honesty. And you know, one thing, so you have like, I guess you'd say you have an edgy brand, right? Your, your, your brand, you want to be edgy. Is that what you say sometimes in some of your pictures, you know? And I think that's Confident, very cool. Edgy, yeah. I think that's cool. <laughs> I think that's great. And that's original because it's, you don't want to like be like the typical voice actor, you know, I'm, I do this, I do that. Yeah. Everybody does that, but you have that brand, you know, like your profile picture, very cool, edgy picture. I love it. You know, and your colors and your, what your marketing brand what is your strategy for marketing your brand How, what what do you do to show hey this is me this is my brand what what is your daily strategy i think the strength of my brand comes from actually setting the foundation in my own personality so um when i'm creating my content or thinking about my content it's all coming from myself i may have a marketing edge to it. I may be like, oh, well, I really want to share this picture or video, but I can also spin this it to be like, check out this other thing. Here's the link to my website. Mm -hmm. um, but for the most part, I'm just sharing myself. Right. Um, and I think that that makes it easier for me than maybe for others who have built their voiceover brand to be this standalone thing, separate from their personal life, separate from their inner thoughts. Right. <laughs> I think I, I tend to share a lot of those and it falls into my brand because I've built my brand around myself and sharing myself with the world. <laughs> I like that. And so with you and your marketing, so me, I've been in this industry since 2001 and it, there's different strategies every day. Your marketing, if you don't mind asking, when you get up, it, do you focus on like direct marketing? Are you social media marketing, uh, pay to plays? What is your main focus throughout the week for, for getting your word out of your brand? I'd say it's a combination. I I do have my favorite pay to plays. So I, I keep those at the forefront, check them regularly. Um, I lean on social media a lot and um, building a, a website that I'm happy with that people can interact with easily, I think also fits into that. Um, when I'm 
I, I do try to, there is a strategic part of my brain <laughs> where I, I'll come up with ideas or think of optimal times to send out emails. Um, I try to do them in batches because direct marketing to companies that I don't um, personally know or interact with on a daily basis um, doesn't really sit well with me. I'm not a big cold caller. I'm not a big uh cold emailer but when i do like what makes it easier for me to get over that hump and that like that weird tension you feel when you're like why would they even care right. <laughs> they don't know who i am right. um is to do it in batches because then it's like a one and done right so i'll get my list of people that i want to reach out to um companies that i would love to work with and then um i iterate you know, messages to all of them, send them all in one day, and I'll only do that maybe once per quarter. Um, so I'm not doing it, I'm not waking up every day and sending direct emails, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes you're surprised by the people who come back, like you're, you're a quarter past when you sent the email, and then mm -hmm. people are reaching out to you because you came up on Google, they saw you on LinkedIn, and they're like, wait, I did get an email from that girl. Um, so <laughs> it all like it. it all tends to come full circle. I like it. I like that strategy. And so the the next one I want to talk about is your, your head of membership and marketing of women in voice. Let's talk about mm -hmm. that. How did that come about? That's, <laughs> I've only recently been reflecting on how fast this happened. <laughs> but I, um, I was following women in voice along with all other voice related things online. Um, so I had seen them on Instagram and I had actually uh, signed up to be a part of their mentor matchup program because uh, it may be voice tech, but it also encompasses voice acting. Like there's, there's a lot of overlap <laughs> with women in voice and then voice over. So when I signed up for that program, I actually never got reached out to by my mentor. <laughs> I felt like I got ghosted. Um, and quickly after that, I was working my government job. I was feeling like my creativity was being stifled. I had no time to be in the booth. I was so, like going into the office every day. Um, it was sucking my soul. So I saw a listing for women in voice and they were looking for a global admin um, which fits into kind of my professional skill set um, so i applied but when i spoke with the ceo she was like i actually would love to use your other skills we don't have the position open yet but is it cool if i reach out later um and so that that's what ended up happening. They wanted to use my marketing skills. They loved how I had built my brand. Um, they loved the overlap of voiceover into their voice tech and like bridging the gap of those two fields. Um, so I started as an intern in content um, and then swiftly moved up to building their membership program and launching it. Mm -hmm. And then I find myself now as the head of membership and marketing for the entire organization. Nice. So how could one uh, join? You can get for a shout out. How could one of those join the, uh, and get a membership? Yeah. If you want to become a member of Women in Voice, you can go to womeninvoice.org um, slash join us, or you'll be able to find it from the homepage. Um, I'll it's put a free. link on there too. I'll put a link on there for you guys. I think, it, I think yeah. it's amazing. I think that's great. Yeah. You can sign up for free. We have multiple membership uh, tiers to fit every budget. You know, it from zero to a hundred you want to be a platinum member at a hundred you get extra perks um but yeah i would absolutely suggest it to anybody who's interested in voice tech which is becoming a huge uh field and subject um across everything right now uh nice. it's going into our cars all of our devices you know our interactions on um, all of these apps that we all love so much is all becoming so voice based. Um, and you'll, there's, there's so much for you to learn if you become a member. So. Well, good. Well, good. And so I want to ask this question, like I said, you know, knowing that, you know, you've been in this industry for a little bit, what, what would you like to see changed or what do you like so far being a voice actor? You know, first let's talk about things you'd like to see change. I think the community in general is super supportive. Um, but one thing that I did 
notice uh, with the development of Clubhouse app, <laughs> um, I felt, well, and this led me to build my own club was the, the shortage of this mentality. Um, Clubhouse app being the audio only app that it is, beautiful space for voice actors. Right. Um, a lot of free advice going out there, opportunities, people putting up um, competitions and hearing free advice from authorities uh, on the subject, you know, casting directors, voice actors who have been in the biz for years. Um, what I didn't like about the development of that, because I feel like it started out so positive, is that it became kind of a, a soapbox situation where people were getting up on their soapbox and having you come up so that they could they could give you critiques. Oh. They could, and and sometimes that's what you want, right? Sometimes that's exactly what you're looking for. Other times you might just be looking for advice. You right. might not want somebody to nitpick at you um, or you know tell you it, how they think everything should be done. Use this tech. Um, don't talk to these people, you know. Um, and I really didn't like that. I I really I felt like the clubhouse was such a big opportunity for voice actors to have fun in a space and that led me to build the voiceover playground on clubhouse see i think that's a great conversation that everybody should have you know i i think there's some great workshops i think that that they're great for what you're wanting to do in voiceover um and i think there's meetings where it's kind of like going having a meeting you go to a meeting you probably had this in your life where you go to a meeting and there's that one person that asking that question they know the answer to and they want to talk about it for 45 minutes that's yep. the impression i got and it was like i don't want to hear you talk about how much you know and how much yeah. i need it so i totally get that and i appreciate that and i i i think that is something we should all focus on like so if you go to somewhere to meet when talk a, a, to a bunch of voice actors i think you should have that conversation of what really you get out of value the value you get out of that conversation instead of just complaining and soapbox because that's the last thing people want to hear is negative <laughs> negative advice yeah. you know? well it's time to have some fun it's time now we're gonna, we're gonna do the audition <laughs> challenge uh, i sent to you in your chat there um i wrote something fun for you uh, in, in the past shows i like to do uh, write some copy from the 80s i guess i'm an 80s kid so um i wrote you this uh copy so whenever you're ready go and have fun with it and take it away coming this summer the toys that everyone wanted in the 80s are back, but with a twist. They even smell like the name. We present you with sauerkraut kids. And they even smell like sauerkraut. Sauerkraut kids, get yours this summer. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have a buddy back in Nebraska that I talk with. Uh, he's made fun of me because I love cabbage. I love cabbage. <laughs> you know, I don't know where in my life. Uh, I just, I'm a big yeah. pickled vegetable yes. person too. Sauerkraut, yeah. <laughs> cabbage, Rubens, uh, kielbasa, cabbage. Like I could eat cabbage probably three, four times. I just love it. I something with cabbage. And so I was talking to him and I was like, you know, what? I'm going to write a copy about cabbage. And I thought about cabbage. <laughs> my sisters had them. And I remember those things. I'm like, oh my gosh, they were like the funniest things back in the day. So before we go again, thank you. And we're going to have to have you back on because I love the conversations we're having. We'll have to do this again. Yeah. What is some advice? to somebody that, and it's a cliche question, like the beginning questions, you know, what, what advice do you give to those now? So more and more voice actors come into this industry. What advice would you give that you would have changed when you started? I think some of the advice I've given in the past, um, when I've been interviewed is to be yourself and to move with purpose. And I still stand by that advice, but I think today, um, I'm kind of thinking more in terms of people who, who are interested in getting into voice acting because they want it to be their job. Um, I would caution you to really look at and evaluate every other aspect of voice acting as a job that doesn't involve you being in front of the microphone because there's so much that you don't see. There's so much that you don't even think about uh, having to need or do or spend time on <laughs> um, creating invoices, doing your taxes, um, marketing, sending emails, 
SEO on your website, um, building website, all of these things, how you interact with your clients, um, time management. <laughs> I could go on and on. I would caution you to make sure that you know how much of yourself you want to give to this before diving in and saying, I'm going to do this for my job. You need to have visual of the entire spectrum of things that are going to be necessary for you to do that. Um, and then move with purpose and be yourself <laughs> after that. I love it. Great advice. And before you go, I like, I like to say, you, you know, I follow a bunch of voice actors and lately my strategy has been fo follow those that, you know, give good value to you. You have amazing, like, like amazing personality. I guess you have a great aura about yourself and I see great things for you. I just, I just really do. I just know you're going to rise to the top. You have a, a great personality. Your content's great. And I just want to say, Kayla Pitts, thank you so much for being on the, behind the audition podcast. You're awesome. Thank you, Kurt. Thanks for having me. I would love to be on again sometime. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. For more information about Kayla or to book her for a project, go to kaylapittsvoice.com. You can also check out the wonderful group that Kayla works with at womenandvoice.org. Thanks for listening in on Behind the Audition podcast, made possible by Hilton Productions. If you need a male or female voiceover, contact us at hiltonproductions.com. Hilton Productions, let our voices do the selling.